Hello children, welcome to digital classes. Children, today we are back to continue with our previous session on the chapter sound. Before going into our lesson today, let us look at what we have learned in our previous session. In our previous session, we had learned that vibrating bodies produce sound. We have also seen this in activities. We have also seen that sound can also cause vibration. So, vibration and sound are interconnected. Sound possesses energy and sound needs a medium to propagate. What is the medium children? It can be a solid, a liquid or a gas. Next we have seen that larynx is the part for which because of which we are able to speak. It has two muscular ligaments called the vocal cords. So children let us see what are we going to learn today. Today we will be learning about the propagation of sound in vacuum. What is vacuum children? Yes the empty space is called as vacuum. So we are going to see that sound cannot travel through vacuum. We are going to learn about the importance of eardrum, the characteristics of sound, relation between the intensity of sound produced and vibrations of the body. What do we mean by intensity children? Yes, how loud or how low the sound is. Okay, That is the intensity of the sound and does it have any connection with the vibrations of the body. Next we are going to learn that the normal sounds that we hear in our day to day life every movement consist of mixed frequencies. We are going to see what is a noise and a music and the difference between them. Then we will learn about sound pollution and its effects. Children we can say that sound cannot travel in vacuum easily because in the previous session we have learnt that sound needs a medium to propagate. So what does vacuum mean? Yes, vacuum means the absence of any type of medium. Right children? To prove this, we will take a glass, keep a mobile phone in that which is playing music. Okay? Now, bring the glass close to your mouth. Look at the kid children. Bring the glass close to your mouth and try to suck in air. That is, take in all the air in the glass with your mouth. Observe what will happen. Children, this is a very simple activity which you can do at your home. Yes, in this what we will observe is gradually the sound decreases. The volume of the song that was playing will gradually decrease as you are sucking in the air. Yes, children, that means if there was full air, the volume was full. As the air quantity is getting reduced in the glass, the sound is also getting reduced. Hence children, if there is no air at all, that means there is no sound at all. Yes children, so the absence of air or the absence of any medium will give rise to vacuum through which sound cannot travel. Okay children, children if you remember in our previous session, I had asked you one question. Guess the consequence if sound could have travelled through vacuum. What would have happened if sound can travel through vacuum. Let us see a small imaginary example. What do you see here children? Yes, it is a simple solar system. Okay children? Now we know that the space is almost empty. The outer space is almost empty. It is filled with vacuum. There is nothing there. There is no atmosphere. Okay children? That is the reason we are unable to hear any kind of sound from the other worlds. Okay children? Suppose if sound could have travelled through vacuum, then what would we hear? So children, this is just a small clip, a 10 seconds clip for you and an imaginary sound that is supposed to be coming from the space. Yes children, scientists believe that different planets make different sounds while they are moving around the sun. Children, if these sounds reach our ears every moment, imagine what will be our position. We can't bear it, isn't it children? And we cannot hear our normal everyday sounds clearly. So children, 
it is good that sound cannot travel through vacuum and if it had to travel through vacuum then we could have heard all these sounds coming from other objects in the universe now children how are we able to hear the sound very simple with our ears yes or no so what is the ear only what we are seeing outside no children the ear is a very complex structure inside children if you look at the outermost part of the ear this is called as the outer ear okay children the external ear or the outer ear which is in the shape of a loud speaker or a funnel this is going to receive the sound vibrations and the sound vibrations are traveling through the canal the auditory canals okay this is called as the auditory canals and they are going to strike our eardrum yes children the eardrum is just like a stretched balloon so it vibrates when the sound enters and strikes the eardrum okay children and from here the sound vibrations are carried to the internal part of the ear called as the cochlea from here they are going to be transmitted to the brain through different nerves here the most important part of the ear system is the eardrum which is also called as the tympanum since childhood you must have heard your parents saying not to put any sharp objects inside our ears yes children because it is a very very sensitive part so ear basically consists of the outer ear the middle ear and the inner ear the sound vibrations enter the ear canal through the pinna so the external structure that you see here is called as the pinna vibrations enter through the external ear or the pinna these vibrations travel through the auditory canals and they strike the eardrum which is also called as the tympanum when these sound vibrations strike the eardrum the eardrum starts vibrating this vibrations reach the middle ear where it is getting magnified by 30 to 60 times okay children the inside part of our ear is very very small so because of small surface area the vibrations are getting magnified and we are able to hear the sounds clearly now children how do we understand the sound sound is of different types sound can be very very loud and sound can be very very feeble for example if you shout at the top of your voice then it is a loud sound the bursting of crackers is a loud sound and a feeble sound listening to a soft music or talking in a low tone is a feeble sound and the third characteristic of the sound is the amplitude it is the amplitude so these three are the characteristics of a sound that is sound can be identified by these three characteristics let us see how to relate the intensity of sound produced by a body and the vibrations of the body what do we mean by the intensity children yes it is the loudness or the feebleness of a sound and higher the amplitude higher is the loudness lower is the amplitude lower is the sound first we are doing this activity to know the relation between the intensity of sound produced by a body and the vibrations of the body what do we need here we need a wooden table a scale or a hacksaw blade and we need a heavy object to support the scale so children let us see this activity so children let us do the lab activity to understand the relation between the intensity of sound produced and the vibrations in the body let us put the scale edge of the table let us put the blade on the table in this manner with a heavy support and now apply a small force observe the sound children here you have observed that now i am applying more force so when i am applying more force children the number of vibrations are more and 
the sound produced is also large. So, children, in this activity, we have observed that when we applied a small force, the vibrations on the scale or the blade are very less. Intensity of sound that we got is also less. Similarly, when we applied a large force, the vibrations that we observed in the scale are more and the intensity of sound is more. Yes, children, I hope you observed that clearly. When we applied a small force, the vibrations of the scale are less and the intensity of sound was also less. And when we applied a large force, the vibrations of the scale are more and the intensity of sound, that is the loudness of sound is also more. So, from this we can conclude that the vibrations produced in the body and the intensity of sound are directly related. Children, we need to take certain precautions while doing this activity. Make sure that the table edges are smooth. It should not be an uneven surface. It has to be a smooth surface. The object on the scale has to be heavy. That is, it has to support the scale. So, it has to be a heavy object. Or you can use your other hand to apply the force. Be careful while applying force on the scale or the blade as the corners and edges are sharp. So, children, as you are making use of iron hacksaw blade, you have to be careful while doing this activity as it may cut your fingers. So, children, I hope you understood the relation between the intensity of sound produced and the vibrations in the body. In this, children, we have spoken about a term called as the amplitude. What do we mean by amplitude? So, children, for understanding vibration, the to and fro motion of a body from its mean position is called as one vibration. So, we know that as the object is moving from one position to another position and coming back to its original position, this completes one vibration. The maximum displacement of the vibrating body from its mean position is called its amplitude. That is the amount of displacement it is suffering when you are striking the scale and leaving it to what maximum displacement it is going. Suppose you are bending the scale in this manner, it is bending till here. Okay, So, this is the amplitude from here to here, this is the distance covered. So, this is the amplitude of the vibrating body. Like in every physical quantity, the intensity of sound also has a unit. So, let us see what are the units of the intensity of sound. Intensity of sound is measured in decibels. It is denoted by dB. When it is completely silent, a very imaginary situation children, when it is completely silent, it is 0 decibels. A sound that is 10 times stronger than the silence is 10 dB and a sound that is 100 times stronger than the total silence is 20 dB and so on. So, children, how much will be a sound 1000 times stronger? Yes, it will be 30 dB. So, this is the units for the intensity of sound, children. Let us define the pitch of a sound, children. What do we mean by a pitch of a sound? The shrillness of a sound is called its pitch. The sound of an insect or a bird is shriller than the lion's roar. So, children, now I hope you understood what is the meaning of a pitch sound, a high pitch sound. Try to differentiate between the sound of a insect, the sound made by an insect, like you know the night cricket, mosquito, they produce a very very high pitch sound, but the lion's roar, though it is very loud, it is not a high pitch sound. Hence, the sound of an insect or a bird has a higher pitch than the roar of a lion. And in general, a child's voice is shriller than an adult's voice. A child has a high pitch sound compared to the adult sound. In adults also children, the male voice has low pitch compared to the female voice. Okay children, the pitch of a male voice is less compared to the pitch of a female voice. Now in the definition of pitch of a sound, we encountered another new word called as the frequency. Yes children? In general, what do we mean by frequency? Frequency means the occurrence of an event in a given time interval. Okay, children? The occurrence of an event in a given time interval. That is, how many days in a week? 
7 days. Yes, children? We know all days are the same. Yes or no? One week is a time duration and in one week we have 7 days. Let us define the number of vibrations per second is called frequency. Okay, children? We are taking the second as a time unit here and the number of vibrations completed by a body in a given time unit that is a second is called the frequency. The pitch of the sound depends upon its frequency that is higher the frequency of the sound higher is the pitch of the sound okay children and lesser the frequency of the sound lesser is the frequency lesser is the pitch. Children in this diagram you can understand what a high frequency wave is and what a low frequency wave is. See children this horizontal line corresponds to the time okay children. In both the diagrams, you have the same time duration here, but look at number of waves formed. Here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 waves and here we have only 3 waves. So, number of waves in one time duration, here it is 6 and here it is 1, 2, 3 only. Therefore, we say that this is a high frequency wave and this is a low frequency wave. By this we can say that this wave here has this sound wave here has high pitch and this one has a low pitch. Here we can also understand amplitude. See children the distance between this peak and the bottom part is called as the amplitude. The distance between the peak of the wave to the baseline the timeline is called as the amplitude of the wave. So children, I hope you understood what high frequency, low frequency and high pitch and low pitch sound waves mean. Now children, in our everyday life, we are listening to different kinds of sounds. Yes or no? We get so used to these sounds that we tend to overlook them. These sounds are of mixed frequencies. That is, a simple sound consists of a number of frequencies. A simple sound consists of a number of frequencies. Even one word that we utter also consists of different frequencies. So we listen to various sounds every moment. We produce different sounds and tones in our speeches. While talking also children, sometimes we talk very loudly, sometimes we talk very slowly. Sometimes the same word is uttered in different manners. Hence, there is a variation in pitch and amplitude of sound during our speech. Yes children? Just imagine saying hello in different ways. When you take a call, you just say casually hello. When you are greeting your friend directly, you put a joyous expression and say hello. Isn't it children? So, we are using the same word in different frequencies, in different tones. Similarly, understand the word independence. In this word independence, we are stressing on the sound D and not on the other letters. So, in the same word also, we have different variations of frequencies. This helps us to communicate in the form of a language. So, what are we doing children? When we are using different frequencies in our voice tone or in our sound, we are helping each other to communicate in the form of a language. The speech organs involved in producing sounds. So, how are we able to produce these different sounds? In the previous session, we have learnt about larynx, the voice box. Is it the only thing that is helping us to talk children? No, we have other parts that are coordinating with each other to produce different kinds of sounds. Let us see them children. The vocal cords, our lips, the teeth and the tongue and to produce sounds like b, m, p, we are making, taking the help of our lips. The nose and the throat, nose and the throat to make sounds like N and M, N, M. Yes children, it needs our nose and throat. Now every word that we utter is a combination of different sounds. Yes children, as I told you, whatever words we are using, they are a combination of different sounds with different amplitudes and frequencies. And the same word may be uttered in different ways in different situations. Yes children, the word no. When you are just casually denying something, you just say no thank you. But when you are angry, you say no loudly. Yes children, 
So the same word may be uttered in different ways in different situations. Now children, there are different kinds of sounds that we hear in our daily life. Yes, some sounds are very pleasing to our ears and some sounds are not at all pleasing. They are very, very unpleasant, very harsh to our ears. You know, some things that make us close our ears also. Isn't it children? We come across such sounds also and some sounds which make us forget everything and listen happily. So children, these sounds can be categorized as noise and music. Noise is the sounds which are not pleasant to our ears or the sounds which are not pleasant to hear are called as noise. The sounds which are pleasant to hear are called music. Isn't it children? If you like music, obviously all of you like music. So playing music, listening happily, spending time happily, it gives a very relaxed feeling. But what about a noise? Suppose you are stuck up in a traffic jam. It gives such a bad sound. Continuously you are exposed to sound pollution. There is too much of unpleasant noise there. Yes, children? So that is a noise. That is a noise. A noise is an irregular combination of sounds. So there is nothing like a combination, a proper combination of sounds that could be heard happily. Whereas a music is a combination of sounds that are produced in an order. Music is a purposeful sound created children. Isn't it? The music directors or all the musicians, they create music on purpose. They keep the tones in a certain order so that they are pleasant to our ears. So noise is an irregular combination of sounds but Music is a combination of sounds that are produced in an order. Example, traffic sounds and for this it is a melody, for music it is a melodious song. Children, let me ask you, do you think that we are able to hear all the sounds that are being produced around us? No, we can't hear. Yes children, do you agree with me? Did you ever hear a bad sound? You might have heard the cuckoo singing, you might have heard the chirping of a sparrow, you might have heard the cawcaw of a crow. But what about a bat? Did you hear a bat? Does that mean that bat cannot produce a sound? No children, it is just that we can't hear the sound. So there is a thing called as the audible range. The sounds heard by a normal human being are called as audible sounds. Audible means the sounds that we can hear. The sounds heard by a normal human being are called audible sounds. Frequency of the audible sound ranges from 20 vibrations per second to 20,000 vibrations per second. So, if the sounds produced have or they undergo 20 vibrations per second, to 20,000 vibrations per second, then they come under the audible range for the human beings. Yes, children, the audible range for human beings is from 20 vibrations per second to 20,000 vibrations per second. Now, what about the frequencies other than this? They come under the inaudible range, that is the sounds that we cannot hear. The sounds that a normal human being cannot hear are called the inaudible sounds. The sounds that we cannot hear are called as inaudible. Frequency of inaudible sounds are less than 20 vibrations per second or greater than 20,000 vibrations per second. So children, for the sounds which are less than 20 vibrations per second and whose frequencies are greater than 20,000 vibrations per second, we cannot hear those sounds. Now, let us hear some sounds and tell me how they were. Okay children, how was the sound? Did you like it? I did not like it. That was the sound of a heavy traffic jam and a very long cracker sound. Children, 
such sound give rise to sound pollution yes children just like air pollution and water pollution we also have sound pollution which is equally damaging to our health sound pollution is a serious threat to human beings and animals just like air and water pollution if the loudness exceeds 80 decibels it becomes painful so children normally our conversations is up to 60 decibels if it goes up to 80 decibels and we are continuously exposed to this kind of sound in our daily life then it will become painful for us to tolerate and it may cause hearing impairments that is we may become deaf also if we are exposed to this loudness continuously it may cause hearing problems okay children gradually we may lose our capability of hearing properly and we, be, we may become deaf some day so first of all children let us see what are the different causes of the sound pollution the sounds of traffic and the horns of vehicles the sounds made in the construction sites yes children have you ever seen a construction site a lot of sound is created there sounds produced at industrial places because of the machinery that is being used the sounds in mines and explosions wherever there is a mine there is there are explosions also which are taken place for excavation so it also creates a lot of sound pollution and not to forget bursting of crackers i know children most of you enjoy this but some day it is going to be very very painful for us so these are the different causes of sound pollution you can think of some of your own also something that you are hearing around your own home okay now what is the reason children what happens because of sound pollution effects of sound pollution include loss of hearing it may lead to loss of hearing it may lead to sleeplessness yes children can you sleep peacefully with all those sounds around you no definitely we cannot and this may lead to hypertension and increase in blood pressure children for some elderly people this sudden explosive sounds may also lead to heart attacks also yes children so it is not a fun loud sounds can be damaging to anyone so can't we do anything to control the sound pollution we are taking different measures to control air pollution and water pollution then can we control sound pollution yes definitely we can it is very much in our hands let us see how we can do it we can attach silencers to bikes and machines already some of the two wheelers are making use of silencers if we attach this kind of uh, silencers to machines then the output of the sound may be reduced manufacturing and maintaining machinery that work with less noise so children basically we can manufacture machines that make lesser noise and maintain the machinery yes children as we are going on using the machinery as it is getting old it starts making more sound yes children it is because of the internal friction because of the internal friction am among the parts so we can do continuously oiling or greasing to avoid those sounds and avoid sound pollution television and other music players have to be played on medium volume okay you want to enjoy the music play it on medium volume but never on loud music plant trees to reduce sound pollution very interesting isn't it children we have heard that trees can control air pollution here we are seeing trees can control sound pollution also children can you get an answer for this how can trees control sound pollution children trees especially with big leaves and bigger trunks and the smaller shrubs shrubs also they can absorb the sound vibrations they can absorb the sound vibrations and deflect them in different directions in this way they can control or they can reduce sound pollution isn't it wonderful children so start planting more and more trees today children we have come to the end of this session let us see what we have learned in today's session we have learned that sound cannot travel in vacuum the eardrum is also called the tympanum one of the very important part of our body 
sound is characterized by loudness feebleness and amplitude the intensity of sound depends upon the number of vibrations per second more number of vibrations more is the intensity the shrillness of a sound is known as pitch the pitch of the sound depends upon its frequency higher the frequency higher the pitch lower the frequency lower is the pitch the number of vibrations per second is called the frequency audible range of human beings is 20 vibrations per second to 20000 vibrations per second less than 20 vibrations per second and greater than 20000 vibrations per second we cannot hear the sound at all now children here are some questions to improve your learning try to answer them explain the causes of sound pollution in your area what we have seen is general things try to get some points around you differentiate between noise and music write your ideas about controlling sound pollution what measures can we take you can come up with your own ideas also to control sound pollution explain how trees help in reducing sound pollution explain the activity to show that intensity of sound is related to the vibrations in the body the children i hope you have learned and you have understood this topics clearly children you have been provided with the worksheets by scrt try to solve all those worksheets and you can